everybody, Neil McNeil here. Now, you clicked on this video because of the title, and before you go off on me in the comments, please just hear me out. I am a massive Harry Potter fan. I have been with these books since the beginning. I have followed them through all the way up through book seven. I've seen every movie in theaters. I've been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I am such a huge, colossal fan of this universe. J.K. Rowling, in my mind, can do no wrong, but Harry Potter and the Cursed Child was an absolute cluster fuck of a mess. And I hate to say that, it pains me to admit that on camera to all of you because I wanted nothing more than to love this book, this play, this script, whatever it is you want to call it, this Harry Potter story that we have been waiting for. We have been waiting for this moment for nine years now. And since Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows came out, we were waiting for some sort of continuation of the universe. And when we heard that we were getting a stage adaptation of the eighth Harry Potter story, I lost my mind. I was so stoked. I couldn't wait to see it, even though I knew that, like, it was gonna be impossible for me to make it to London to see it on stage, so that, like, I knew I would have to, like, read all the spoilers online, and then J.K. Rowling was like, just kidding, I'm gonna, like, release it as a book, as, like, a script for you all to read, and I was like, I was like, I will be there! I will be there at midnight in Barnes & Noble waiting for this book to come out, which is what I did this past weekend. I met up with some of my friends here in Los Angeles, and we went to a midnight release party of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and on Honestly, like, I am so glad this book exists for the sole reason that it brought me and all of my friends together for a midnight release party of a Harry Potter book as adults. I was 17 when the final Harry Potter book came out, the same age that Harry was when he was going into his final year at Hogwarts. I was so connected to these characters, I was so invested in the story, and I just felt like I was like growing up alongside him. So like, I went to this midnight release party all dressed up, me and my best friend Maxie went as Priori and Contatum, I was dressed up as Avada Kedavra, she was dressed up as Expelliarmus, and we had like a gold strand attaching us the entire night, and whenever people asked what we were, we would like shout out our spells and hold up the gold strand, and they'd be like, oh my god, that's such a great reference and like I've been to multiple midnight release parties of Harry Potter as a teenager but like this was the first time I got to do it as an adult and I appreciated that so so much I'm so glad that this came out when it did because like it just like it just reaffirmed the fact that like I am such a huge Harry Potter fan like I love the world that JK Rowling has created I love all the friends that Harry Potter has brought into my life honestly like Harry Potter has done more for me in terms of friendship than like any other sort of fandom or any other sort of like common shared interest like some of my closest friends out here in Los Angeles we bonded over the fact that we were like such big Harry Potter dorks growing up and like I was into wizard rock like I even went to a signing of the MuggleNet book for like what could possibly happen in book seven I met like Emerson Sparks and got him to like sign my copy I was such such a massive dork back then. And like obviously I still am a massive dork, which is why I went to the midnight release dressed up as a gender bent Hermione Granger. I was like so stoked. I was just like living for it. And then I got home and realized that I wouldn't be able to wait until the morning to read this book. So I sat on my couch at 1.30 in the morning and read the entire play from start to finish until I looked outside and realized it was 7 a.m. and the sun had come up. And trust me when I say this, I wanted nothing more than to love this story and to fully embrace it into the Harry Potter canon. And like, I just, I just don't know what went through their heads when they were writing this. J.K. Rowling and her two fellow playwrights, I just like, I don't understand what happened? And if you don't want any spoilers, please shut this video off right now because I'm about to lay into it. But like, time travel, time travel, of all plot devices they could have used for this stage adaptation of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, the eighth Harry Potter story, they had to go with time travel. Did they not realize that when they introduced the concept of time turners in the third book, when J.K. Rowling was like, oh shit, this could cause some major plot holes down the line and people are gonna wonder why well, they don't just use time turners all the time to go back and stop Voldemort, that she had to destroy them in the battle at the Department of Mysteries in book five, and like that's, that's why, that's why time turners were never brought up again, was because they were such a huge, a huge deus ex machina, like they could have just like solved everything, like these, these little, these little, these little shit 
could have solved so many problems, but J.K. Rowling was like, nah, you know what? They're gonna have to do this the hard way. And like, I was so grateful for that. I was like, thank God they got rid of Time Turners because like, that would have just added so many more like weird layers to the story. Like, they, they established in book three, they established that the way the time travel works in this universe is that when somebody uses a Time Turner to go back in time, that it has already happened and is a closed loop. So like, you can't alter the timeline. Like, everything that was supposed to happen did happen with the time travel, so like, no matter like, if you went back or if you didn't go back, like, it was going to happen no matter what. Time travel's weird, man. Like, time travel is so weird. That's why shows like Doctor Who have to like, have clearly defined rules when it comes to time travel, and like, sometimes they break them, sometimes they alter the rules, but like, for the most part, time travel TV shows and movies stick to these core principles because there are so many different theories when it comes to time travel, but like Harry Potter, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child just shit on every single time travel theory that could possibly exist. Like the fact that even after all of the time turners were destroyed, there was still one magical time turner that could transport you back over years and years and years, but only for like five minutes, like only five minutes, so you can't cause like that much damage, but like when you come back, you're like in a new timeline, but like you don't have any of the memories that like are associated with that timeline if you were the one who traveled back, but like then you have to like adapt to it and like you're like, oh my god, like I remember everything that happened and like, like what? Like if you go back in time and alter the timeline and prevent yourself from ever getting to that moment where you had to go back in time in the first place, that immediately negates the fact that you had to go back in time and that timeline never existed, so like why are you still living in this timeline in the future now? Like that should have never happened. And the fact that they went back in time in this play four times. They went back four different times. It was just like, why? Like, why? Why would you go back? Why would you create that many parallel universes? Why would you create that many different timelines? Why would you create that many different, like, convoluted stories? Like, this was just, like, this was so unnecessary. And, like, when this prototype Time Turner was destroyed by Delphi, who, like, I will get to. I will get to the Delphi of it all in just a moment. But like when this time turner is destroyed, the fact that Draco Malfoy shows up and goes, by the way, I bet you didn't know, there was a second prototype time turner that could take you back years and years and years into the past and also it will allow you to stay there for more than five minutes. I was just like, what? Like what? Like what? What? How is this acceptable? How is this, this is like, this just breaks so many rules. This breaks so many laws of like physics and magic and like time travel. And like, these aren't even like real laws that exist. These aren't even like human principles that are like fully defined in our universe. So the fact that they're like going through and like breaking these principles in this like fictional world and they're like, you know what? Nothing matters, nothing matters anymore because you know what? We're just gonna have time turners. Like this is like, this is like Oprah giving out time turners right now. Like you get a time turner, you get a time turner. Everybody gets a time turner and an alternate in a timeline like why and like going back to Delphi like the fact that Voldemort just like had this like mysterious daughter like out of nowhere like oh my god Voldemort has a daughter named Delphi and she's gonna like fuck shit up why 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 you took the character of Bellatrix Lestrange this like badass, just like chaotic, evil character who was just like, I'm gonna fuck everything up for no absolute good reason. And the fact that you were like, oh, and by the way, she gave birth during book seven. You didn't see that, but she like totally gave birth. Like she was pregnant with Delphi when she murdered Dobby. Like how, 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 like how, how did nobody realize this? Like how did nobody know about this? How did nobody like, how, how, why? Why? And yeah, the fact that this like silver and blue haired girl with like the wing tattoo is just gonna come and like fuck everything up, but like under the guise of like Amos Diggory's niece and like just like, just like, is, are, like are there no fact checkers in the magical community? Like can nobody go back and be like, wait a minute, Amos Diggory never had any brothers or sisters. He never had a niece. Like, like how stupid. Stupid are you people? The one saving grace of this entire play though is the homoerotic friendship between Albus Severus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy. Like I ship them like no other. Like like everybody in this play was Scorpibus trash. And yeah, I'm coining it right now. Their ship name is Scorpibus. But like everybody shipped them. Like Delphi wanted them together. Snape wanted them together. Yeah, yeah, they brought back Snape. They brought back Snape. What? What? I think my favorite homoerotic moment from this entire play comes in Act 4 when Scorpius and Albus are like contemplating their possible fate 
in all of this, you know, transported back in time to like the Scottish hills or like whatever, like how did they get there in the first place? Like time travel is supposed to be like the time turners are only supposed to travel you through time, not space, but like like when, when they went back like the fourth time, they went back through time and space. So they ended up in like a completely different area, whatever. Too much time travel thought. Scorpius says, still, if I had to choose a companion to be at the return of eternal darkness with, I'd choose you. Like Albus, Scorpius, are y'all gonna fuck? Because if so, I wanna watch. And it was just like, why? Why are we doing all of these things? Why are we messing with something that wasn't broken? Why are we ruining the perfectly ambiguous epilogue that J.K. Rowling gave us? Like, why do we have to go back on this? Like, why? Why? I know that we asked for a sequel to the Harry Potter series, but at what cost? I was just like, nah, man. Nah. I live tweeted this entire thing too, and it was just like a downward spiral of just like emotions and feelings and just not knowing what was going on. There were just so many things that I don't understand and don't agree with and don't know why. Why? Why did this happen? I'm glad it happened. I'm glad that it brought me and my friends closer together. I'm glad that I was able to go to a midnight release of a Harry Potter book with some of my closest friends and dress up and be silly and be like adults who were like reliving our childhood. Like I was at a midnight release for a Harry Potter book playing Pokemon Go and I was like, when did I transport back to the year 2005? Like JK Rowling literally had us traveling through time this past weekend, but like, but like it just ruined everything. Like obviously it didn't ruin everything. I mean like I still love the books, I still love the movies, I still love the entire world that J.K. Rowling created, but like what was this insane fan fiction play that I just read? This was literally self-insert fan fiction for the Harry Potter universe. And like I honestly would have rather have seen a stage adaptation of My Immortal than this. And, and like I'm sure, I'm sure the play is like fantastic when you see it live. Like I'm sure like the effects are dazzling, I'm sure the actors are all great, I'm sure like it's hilarious, I'm sure it's fun, I'm sure it's heartwarming, but like the story as a whole just like wasn't there for me. And like I just don't, it, it didn't feel like a Harry Potter story, it felt, it felt like a fan fiction. And I don't know, maybe I'm just being like too critical, like maybe I'm just being like too negative about this. Maybe like this is my old age finally like showing and like creeping in and being like, Neil, everything that you used to love wasn't even that good to begin with. But like Harry Potter was good. Harry Potter is good. Harry Potter is going to stand the test of time. My kids are gonna read it. Like I have fantasies, I have vivid fantasies of like my firstborn child, like on their 11th birthday, giving them a letter to Hogwarts, like explaining like how Harry Potter changed my life, how it brought so many people People into my world, how it made me so many friends and made me like a more loving and accepting person and like also like giving them like the first book to be like here's your journey, here's where it starts and like just go off and enjoy, like like enjoy life, like enjoy, enjoy the lessons that this book is going to teach you, enjoy friendship, enjoy love, just enjoy being a kid, like enjoy, enjoy the world, enjoy the magic that the world has to offer, like the world is full of so much magic, like our world right here is just like full of it, and like, and like, why? Like when my child finishes all seven Harry Potter books and they're like, that was great, is there anything else I should read? I'd be like, no, no there is nothing else, the story ends there, that's it, it's over, we don't talk about the cursed child. I just don't know what to think. Clearly, I have some opinions about this. Um, if you want to go read my live tweets, they're all up on my live tweeting account because, like, that's, like, it's just, it was just, like, a clear, it was just, like, a woo, like, this, this is, this is a mess. It was a mess. It was a beautiful mess. It was our mess. It was our collective mess. And I'm glad that we all got to experience it together, but, like, my god. Like, is this, is this the real life? Or is this just fantasy? So, yeah. Uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know your opinions on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe it was a wonderful story. Maybe it was a wonderful play. Um, I am going to ship Albus and Scorpius until the end of time. Hashtag Scorpibus. Thank you for watching my incoherent ramblings because I needed to just get this out. And until next time, I will catch you later, nerds. And like, I'm still not over the fact that the trolley witch was like a weird, magical, like, robot, I think? She had like metal spikes in her hand or something? Like was she like a ghost? Was she like a spell? Like is she just like enchanted? Like what? What was that? Is she the green goblin? She literally throws pumpkin pasties and they explode. The trolley witch is literally the green goblin. Why? Why? Why?